the vast majority of the videos that I have presented so far on what I call this chimney technique have been leading up to this particular moment which is what I refer to as a hybrid startup routine or a three-stage hybrid startup technique for kerosene. What I'm going to show you here is some preliminaries that are required in order to actually pull this off. The three stages refer to the first stage being the uh, priming with a small amount, about one cc of denatured uh, alcohol. Second stage is where the stove is burning but only with fuel that is within the fuel line and this fuel is Coleman white gas type fuel although regular automotive type fuel probably could be used if, if that's all you had. This is only a few cc's that is within the fuel line and the, the fuel line is being uh, uh, connected to a pump bottle uh, that has kerosene in it. So as the kerosene is going through the line, it's pushing through the uh, Coleman fuel, which is uh, heating up the burner, but at the same time providing heat for um, doing some useful work, such as um, heating up uh, water. When the kerosene reaches the burner, there was a transition stage as it begins to catch, but um, eventually, it takes about a minute or so of some sputtering. The third stage is the actual burning of the kerosene, and this is a fairly uh, predictable procedure. Many of the uh, typical techniques for starting up these stoves, especially with kerosene, are somewhat messy. They have a lot of flare-ups and things like that. Uh, this one technique is, again, relatively consistent and predictable, and that's one of the charms about it. It also uses a very little bit of commonly available denatured alcohol. You don't need priming paste or anything like that. And the second stage, the Coleman fuel, white gas, uh, or if necessary, out, uh, standard auto fuel, uh, should be fairly easily obtainable. I've already shown videos on how to start one of these stoves with a two-stage technique using a higher amount of ethanol. This in combination with this this device I call a chimney which retains much of the heat and concentrates it in the area of the generator and it also protects the um, burner generator area from um, excess drafts and things like that that would tend to cool off the generator during the preheating process and so it produces again a more uh, efficient means of starting them up. So there are at least a couple methods if you don't have any uh, Coleman type fuel or even automotive type gas but you have kerosene available you will then of course have to come up with another plan as far as like using the denatured alcohol. Um, if you don't have denatured alcohol then you may have no choice but to go back to the old routines that people have been talking about for ages. What I'm going to show you here is the initial calibration. Every stove is different. Um, the fuel line, as you see here, is of a certain length. Different stoves have got different um, type apparatuses. Uh, this particular stove is made by Primus. It's called the MFS. It's an older or Himalaya. It's an older model, but they have a more updated model that's similar to this. They also have an Omni Fuel, which is again similar to this. You'll notice this connector here is one that can be used for Lindell type canisters, these isobutane types, but this is what I call a universal connector because this also connects to the Primus pump. It has a similar thread design. For these kinds of stoves, other stoves that have a proprietary type connection I'm not dealing with here. But for those types of stoves, this is one of them, there are other stoves that are similar, that have this kind of connector, this technique I'm showing you is a possible one that you can use. And what I've done is, I've had made up for me, 
This is a prototype, but this is showing you what it looks like. There's a brass piece here that has lindle threads on it. It has a threaded portion on the inside that it accommodates this silver looking piece, which is meant to attach to a syringe such as this. <clears throat> I have a little O-ring here to, to seal it off. This will connect to this and this without the needle will connect to that adapter. When I do that, fuel will be injected into the line to basically fill it up, but not so far that it actually spills out. And that produces the fuel for this so-called second stage uh, of the procedure. For this particular stove, but for any other stove that's similar to this, <clears throat> you have to have some idea of how much fuel you're gonna be putting into the line because you're going to draw up a specific amount of fuel every time you use the stove for this purpose. Now that produces the predictability and consistency aspect of, of this technique. And uh, so whereas most of the te uh, startup techniques are people talking about you open up the control valve and wait for fuel to spurt out or you wait a couple seconds or whatever the case is, this is not like that. You draw up a certain amount of fuel into a syringe, you inject it into the line, and it's always the same amount every single time. So you end up with results that are relatively predictable every single time. But first you have to kind of, as it were, calibrate the line. You will see in this particular model, again it's an older model, it, but it has a, a common design. It has a loop type generator that comes up, arch, arches over, and then goes down to where the jet is, as you can see there. You have to first get some idea of how much fuel is going to have to be put in here, and then you want to put slightly less than that when you actually get ready to start doing the uh, startup routine. You really don't want fuel coming out of the jet for the second stage. You want the fuel to get almost up to where the, uh, the reservoir is right below the jet, a little bit of pooling down there, not inside the burner chamber, but underneath the jet itself. If you were to unscrew this jet, you'd see that there's a little bit of open space, and that part could probably have some fuel in it, but you don't want it really spurting out. When you start this thing up with alcohol, that fuel that is in the reservoir below the jet begins to start vaporizing anyway, and it starts this, uh, there's a few flames that emit as a result of that, but it actually assists, again, using the chimney, it assists in heating up the generator itself. So it, it really turns out to be a useful additional uh, heating method. So the first thing you have to do is you have to calibrate the line. And with this loop generator, if you go really slowly, the fuel will come up over here and then it will start spilling down there. And you may end up getting a false reading so what you would like to do is have this elevated so that basically the fuel column comes up and there's really, it's pushing air above it as much as possible. I'm not sure how this is going to show up on, on the video and, and I just want to show that basically as I'm injecting fuel into this area here to calibrate it, this stove is going to be held kind of in this position in order to allow the fuel to continue to move up against the air column and um, rather than having the fuel and, and air mixed in between. Now the way this is going to work is I've already calibrated this. I know that the line holds four and a half cc's on this particular stove but let's suppose I didn't know how much it was going to be. And by the way the amount of fuel that fills between this point here and this connection here is three cc's all by itself. Now I've got four cc's in this syringe of this Coleman fuel and that's less than it needs to fill up this line. So what I'm going to do is do this as two different um, um, injections. The first one will be um, with the four cc's and exhaust it but hold it in place and then I'll fill this up again with another four cc's and then slowly inject that, holding the stove a little bit like this, until I see fuel coming out from here. That will give me 
when you add the two amounts together, that'll tell you how much basically it takes to fill this, which is about a half cc for this prototype, and spill out. You will then deduct approximately one cc from that amount, and that'll tell you how much fuel you'll need every time you do this. In order to clear this, you add some air when you're actually getting ready to do the, uh, the startup routine. You'll add about a half cc for this prototype, a half cc of air. You'll hold the syringe like this and the air will push any residual uh, fuel through this so that it all goes into the line. You don't need to have this filled with fluid because when you take this off, you just lose that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is hook up this adapter. And this is really simple. This is again a lindle thread and simply put it in place until it kind of compresses against the o-ring that's inside. You'll need of course to open up the control valve in order to be able to allow fuel to go through. Then you will um, get this 4 cc's in here and you will simply attach it to here and inject slowly this 4 cc's kind of again holding this up a little bit as I'm showing you here and then close the valve off then I'll refill this up Okay, I've gone back and gotten another 4 cc's of the Coleman fuel and again the valve is um, open up the valve and kind of elevate this. Now the idea here is to watch to make sure that you're getting an idea of when this is coming through the jet so I'm slowly injecting here Okay, it's already shooting out. So let me close this off. From here, you can see that starting with the four cc's in this one, we have two cc's uh, approximately left. So basically you add these two up together, subtract about one cc to account for the dead space in here and the excess that is spurting out there and that gives you about the amount that you need in this case about four cc's there's no point in keeping this in the line so you can um, remove this by just aspirating with the syringe and one of the things that I should mention is, is that this plastic syringe, even though it is relatively impervious to petroleum products, it is not entirely like that. If you leave Coleman fuel or gasoline in this for an extended period of time, it will essentially melt and it will take away some of the plastic that's on the inside and it will leave a step off. So when you finish with this, make sure that it is dry otherwise you will end up with a leak developing because this plunger mechanism is plastic it doesn't have the sealing capabilities of a rubber plunger and once it meets that step off uh, it will leak this is a 2cc glass syringe this you have never to worry about as far as any concerns about it melting or degrading or changing its calibration or anything.